If you've been following my channel and watching my recaps and reviews of Chicago PD, you might be surprised to hear that I've been watching more than just the Chicago series. One of the shows that really caught me off guard as a sleeper hit is Tulsa King. I watched the entire first season when it aired almost two years ago in November 2022, and I've been eagerly awaiting season two, which is finally out. I didn't expect to enjoy the show as much as I did, but it really took me by surprise. I'm not a huge follower of Sylvester Stallone's movies or shows. I've seen a few and don't dislike his work, but I've never been someone who rushes to see his latest projects. That said, I absolutely respect his long career in Hollywood, and I truly think this role was made for him. At 75, Stallone is really holding his own. Now, some of his scenes aren't exactly realistic, especially for someone his age, but Stallone plays it so well that I don't mind those parts at all. If Vin Diesel can try to convince us of some of the over-the-top stuff in his movies, I can certainly enjoy Stallone in Tulsa King. I've realized why I'm drawn to shows like this one and the Chicago series. They're not reliant on CGI or the comic book movie craziness we've been seeing in recent years. Instead, it's all about good, old-fashioned writing and storytelling that is compelling for the actors to take on. It's simple, yet thought-provoking. The show airs on Paramount+, Plus, yet another paid streaming service, which is a bit of a pain. But if you have it and haven't watched the show yet, I recommend giving it a try, especially if you like strong storytelling with a mafia backdrop. Hi, and welcome to Timeless New York City. I'm Lena, and I'll be your guide as I recap and review Tulsa King. I'll be sharing my thoughts and reactions, season by season, so get ready for the funny and action-packed world of Tulsa King. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out my online store, Timeless New York City, where I've got festive items for the holiday season, including my unique spin on Santa Claus and his witch. Because who says Santa has to be with Mrs. Claus? You'll find the link to the store pinned in the comments below. Hope you enjoy the items. Now, let's jump into the characters and their arcs from Season 1. Our first character is Dwight the General Manfredi. Dwight is the central character, a mobster who has just been released after serving 25 years in prison. He expects to return to his previous life in New York, but is instead banished to Tulsa by his Mafia bosses. Dwight's character is shaped by his loyalty to the Mafia, despite their abandonment of him, and his struggle to adapt to life outside prison in a small town far from the streets of New York. Season one follows Dwight as he seeks to rebuild his criminal empire from the ground up, utilizing his old school mafia tactics in a place with no established organized crime. He takes over a marijuana dispensary run by Bodhi and recruits a team of local misfits to aid him in expanding his operation. Dwight is also motivated by a deep desire to reconnect with his estranged daughter, Christina, whom he hasn't seen in years. Throughout the season, Dwight's story arc revolves around his conflict with the New York Mafia, who want him to stay out of their affairs. His defiance of their orders leads to violent confrontations, culminating in a dramatic showdown in the season finale. Simultaneously, Dwight faces challenges with his new crew, particularly as his authoritarian leadership style clashes with the laid-back attitude of his Tulsa recruits. His relationship with ATF agent Stacy Beale adds complexity to his arc, as both characters struggle with personal demons and their own moral codes. By the end of the season, Dwight has successfully built his own criminal empire in Tulsa, but at the cost of completely severing ties with his former mafia family and continuing to face the unresolved emotional distance with his daughter. Our second character is Tyson. Tyson is a young, ambitious cab driver who becomes one of Dwight's closest allies. Initially, Tyson is attracted to the idea of working for someone like Dwight, viewing it as a chance to escape the limitations of his small town life and find excitement in working for a real life gangster. Over the course of the season, Tyson serves as Dwight's driver and confidant, absorbing the mobster's lessons on power, loyalty, and survival. While Tyson looks up to Dwight, their relationship evolves as Tyson begins to question whether this is the life he truly wants, especially as the violence and danger increase. Tyson's story arc explores his inner conflict, blessed between his admiration for Dwight 
and the reality of becoming involved in the criminal world. He starts to realize that the life of a mobster is far from glamorous and is often brutal and morally compromising. Despite his reservations, Tyson remains loyal to Dwight and becomes more entangled in the empire-building efforts. By the end of the season, Tyson has transformed from a naive young man looking for adventure to a more hardened and skeptical figure, realizing that there may be no turning back from the path he's chosen. The third character is Bodhi. Bodhi is the laid-back owner of the marijuana dispensary that Dwight initially takes over as part of his expansion into Tulsa. A quirky and somewhat reluctant accomplice, Bodhi becomes an important part of Dwight's operation, though their relationship is often strained by Bodhi's initial reluctance to engage in more aggressive criminal activity. Despite his non-threatening demeanor, Bodhi proves resourceful and capable as Dwight's enterprise grows. As season one progresses, Bodhi goes from being an independent business owner who wants to fly under the radar to being deeply involved in Dwight's criminal undertakings. His story arc largely focuses on his gradual shift from passive participant to a more assertive player in Dwight's empire. Though he starts off wary of Dwight's old school methods, Bodhi eventually embraces the role he plays in the growing operation, while still maintaining his quirky, offbeat personality. By the end of the season, Bodhi becomes more comfortable in his role and begins to see the benefits of the partnership, although it is clear that his character will have to navigate the complexities of being part of a criminal empire in future seasons. Our fourth character is Mitch Keller. Mitch is an ex-convict who runs a bar in Tulsa and becomes one of Dwight's key allies. As a former criminal, Mitch is initially hesitant to get involved with the Dwight's operations, but ultimately agrees to help out. Mitch's bar serves as the central hub for Dwight's criminal activities, and Mitch proves to be a valuable resource for navigating the Tulsa underworld. His character provides a grounded, pragmatic perspective on the world Dwight is trying to build, as Mitch understands the risks involved in getting back into criminal activity. Mitch's arc is one of reluctant acceptance of his role in Dwight's empire. He tries to maintain a level of distance from the violence and danger, but as Dwight's operations grow, Mitch finds himself more involved than he anticipated. He also becomes something of a mentor figure to the younger members of Dwight's crew, offering them advice based on his own experiences in the criminal world. By the end of the season, Mitch is fully integrated into Dwight's inner circle, though it's clear that he is wary of the dangers that lie ahead. The fifth character is Stacy Beale. Stacy is an ATF agent who becomes entangled in Dwight's world. She is tough, intelligent, and skilled in her role, but she's also battling personal issues, including a drinking problem and a complicated love life. She first encounters Dwight in a personal capacity, not realizing his criminal background, and the two form a relationship. As the season progresses, Stacy's professional and personal lives collide as she learns more about Dwight's activities. Her growing attachment to Dwight puts her at odds with her duties as a law enforcement officer, creating internal conflict. Stacy's story arc delves, delves into her struggle between her duty to the law and her connection to Dwight. Her character is torn between her attraction to Dwight and her responsibility as an ATF agent to bring down criminals like him. As she becomes more aware of his activities, her involvement with Dwight grows more complicated, especially as she begins to compromise her own ethics to protect him. By the end of the season, Stacy is left in a morally gray area, caught between her professional obligations and her personal desires, setting the stage for potential further development in future seasons. Our sixth character is Vince Antonacci. Vince is a member of the Mafia in New York who harbors deep resentment toward Dwight. He sees Dwight as a threat to his position within the Mafia, especially after Dwight's release from prison. Vince's antagonism escalates as Dwight defies the Mafia's orders, and he becomes instrumental in orchestrating the tension between Dwight and the New York crime family. His character is driven by ambition, jealousy, and a desire to cement his own power within the organization, setting him up as one of the key adversaries Dwight faces throughout the season. The seventh character is Armand Truisi. Armand, also known as Manny, is a former Mafia associate of Dwight, who has gone into hiding in Tulsa under an assumed identity to escape his criminal past. 
When Dwight arrives in Tulsa, Armand initially tries to keep his distance, but he is eventually drawn back into Dwight's world. Armand's arc focuses on his attempts to leave behind his life of crime while grappling with the pull of old loyalties. His insider knowledge of mafia dealings makes him a valuable ally to Dwight, although he is conflicted about getting involved again. His character adds depth to the story, showing the difficulty of escaping a life of organized crime. Our eighth character is Christina Manfredi. Christina is Dwight's estranged daughter, who has spent most of her life without him due to his imprisonment. Much of her character's arc revolves around her strained relationship with Dwight. While Dwight wants to reconnect and make amends, Christina remains distant and resentful of the impact his criminal lifestyle had on her upbringing. Now married with her own family, she struggles to integrate Dwight into her current life. Her relationship with Dwight highlights the emotional cost of his choices and serves as one of the most personal and emotional subplots in the season. Christina's character underscores the theme of family and redemption, offering a counterbalance to Dwight's criminal activities. The ninth character is Pete Invernizzi. Pete is the mafia boss in New York who orders Dwight's exile to Tulsa. He is an old-school mobster who respects Dwight but sees him as a liability due to the time he spent in prison. Pete's decision to send Dwight away sets the entire story in motion, and while he plays more of a background role, his influence is felt throughout the season. He represents the rigid hierarchy of the New York Mafia and the way power dynamics shift within organized crime. His character serves as a reminder of the life Dwight left behind and the power struggles within the Mafia. Our tenth character is Grace. Grace works at the marijuana dispensary with Bodie and gradually becomes more involved in Dwight's criminal operation as the season progresses. She is resourceful, street smart, and capable, adding a layer of toughness to the operation. Grace's character serves as a valuable member of Dwight's growing crew, helping with logistics and the day-to-day -day operations of the dispensary-turned-criminal front. While her backstory isn't as deeply explored as others, she plays an important role in showing how Dwight recruits everyday people into his orbit, transforming them into valuable assets in his new criminal empire. Our 11th character is Margaret Devereaux, a wealthy and influential figure in Tulsa's high society who owns the prestigious Fenario Ranch, a prominent horse farm and animal preserve. Margaret plays a crucial role in Dwight's integration into Tulsa's elite circles. As a trustee of the Annie Oakley Society, Margaret is well-connected and respected, making her a valuable ally for Dwight as he navigates his new environment. Over the course of the season, Margaret's relationship with Dwight grows both personally and professionally. She offers him insights into Tulsa's local power structures, and her influence becomes an asset to his efforts in establishing his criminal empire. By the season's end, their alliance solidifies, setting the stage for a more prominent role for her character in future seasons. Our 12th character is Chicky Invernizzi. Chicky is the ambitious and ruthless son of Mafia boss Pete Invernizzi. With his father aging and his own ambitions to rise within the New York Mafia, Chicky views Dwight as both a threat and a relic of the past. Resentful of Dwight's return and influence, Chicky harbors deep animosity toward him, especially after Dwight begins to carve out his own empire in Tulsa, defying the Mafia's orders. He represents the new generation of mobsters, willing to challenge the old guard and assert his dominance through violence and manipulation. Chicky's cold and calculating demeanor is offset by moments of frustration and impulsiveness as he grapples with his desire to take control of the family business while proving himself capable of stepping out of his father's shadow. His character arc throughout the season sets up a continued power struggle with Dwight, hinting at further conflict in future seasons. In the season one finale of Tulsa King, Dwight solidifies his dominance in Tulsa's criminal underworld following a decisive victory over the Black Macadam biker gang led by Kalen Waltrip. This confrontation not only affirms Dwight's authority, but also paves the way for his expanding influence in the city. Concurrently, Dwight's personal life sees progress as he reconnects with his estranged daughter, Christina, taking steps toward mending their relationship. However, the emergence of new adversaries and unresolved issues foreshadows challenges ahead, setting the stage for an intriguing second season.
What I really enjoyed about this show are the funny moments between the main characters throughout the season, mixed with some dark, explosive scenes when they get into intense fight sequences. The show really allows Stallone to shine while giving the other characters the chance to step up without feeling out of place. If you're watching Tulsa King, let me know in the comments below. For more of my reviews and recaps of other shows like Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, and Chicago Med, check out my playlist here. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update. Your support means the world to me and keeps me motivated to create more content. See you all in my next video.